Dedication to Ambrose Bierce by George Sterling, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. Ah, glad to thy decree I bow, from whose unquestioned hand did fall, beyond a lesser to recall, the solemn laurels on my brow. I tremble with the splendid weight, to mine unworth tis given to know how dread the charge I undergo, who claim the holy muse as mate. Her altars lift incessant fire, she holds no truce with death nor peace. Till mine degrade and beauty cease, she calls her chosen to the lyre. Remiss the ministry they bear, who serve her with divided heart. She stands reluctant to impart her strength to purpose, end, or care. Shall best I guard her hallowed light by sheltered service on her towers? Or strife with mammon and the powers that hold humanity in night? I loose the choral trumpet's gleam, but half its thunder leave untried. Midway on doubting vans I glide, nor hasten to the heights of dream. A shadow o'er the vision runs, I hear a grieving from the lands, Where sorrow heavy sceptred stands, And moanings from the mist of suns. Lo, men in weariness behold, No respite from the toils of time, Their children wander in the slime, Round mammon's domes of plundered gold, And taste the bitterness of dearth, must they beyond my conscience wait, or lack my voice as advocate, to cry their wrongs athwart the earth? Shall song, delinquent, win from life the light and rapture that she knows, and sleep at last where Lethe flows, a stranger to the human strife? Shall art fare sunward and disdain the patient hands that smooth her ways? Shall she, delighting, scorn to raise the fallen on their path of pain? So questioning, can I endure the peace of mine uplifted place? Accused and judge, I fear to face the dumb tribunals of the poor. But doubt, in unrelenting quest, upon the psychic whirlwind rides, her potent moons advance the tides that urge her maelstroms to unrest. With virgin powers my spirit waits. Shall she, unequal, judge her God, or trespass where his feet have trod, when as he wrought to arm his fates? What hath been is, what is shall be. May man, presuming, intervene on what his lords have long foreseen, and sealed unto eternity? Shall art annul and song disclaim the laws that guard their deeper good, or hold so little understood the larger issues of their fame? Can song accord the light she brings in crypts where beauty never woke, share with utility his yoke, yet roam her sky on loosened wings? How darkly wait the silent years wherein the vision veils the end! May I, untroubled, comprehend the truths that best are seen through tears? Emotion smites with blinded aim, religion seeks a baffled wraith, the ignis fatuous of faith, and learning tends a ruthless flame. I, fearful of unreason's drink, avail me of a deeper sight, and turn me to thy clearer light, in which as babes we others blink. August 1901 End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Memorial Day 1901 by George Sterling Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia Memorial Day 1901 to each the city of his dream far lifts the purple of her walls and pure her dome's eternal gleam above the promise of her halls unto each soul her chosen ways and travail upward from the night enough that 
from her dark of days she have in quest the trusted light though in futility she hold to heights eternally afar eyes that the weighted morning's gold bless never she hath stood a star weary the ways whereon we strive to air them of the ends of strife sabre and cannon lance and jive prepare the afterpiece of life irrevocable fraught with dread the mandates of the cosmic plan await in traceries of red the men that frame the house of man whereof as holy lies the stone deep in obscurities of dust as that whereby the years shall own the far fulfilment of the trust ah dream of unavailing eyes ah glory of the loosened cross by hope foreseen on future skies to hush the memory of loss the cannon take their pall of rust its gentler harvests wait the sword the deep of war's recurrent lust submissive to a deeper word as honoured by that father day shall be the warrior as the bard and equal shall its wisdom say the hands that build the hands that guard large writ in blood their annals burn and hallowed though the morning star of peace arise and races earn the red affranchisement of war o vision of a nation crowned with purer light by lasting peace neath altered skies whence battle frowned and pain had terrible release deep in our dark of strife and wrong blinded we lose a sanguine flood entreating from our fates ere long the guerdon of the holy blood diviner cities wrought anew in all that love and art may lend and heights of freedom whereunto we deem the toiling ages trend pleasant o love thy garden close and murmur of the untroubled dove but sterner walls constrain thy foes and other sounds than thine o love incitement of the whining fife and mutter of the troubled drum clamour of life that reels from life cannon that smite all clamour dumb supreme o art thy splendours blaze and fair the shrine thy sons attain but ruder hands on darker ways ensure the incomparable fane so gently came the feet of spring along the wintry ways afar so rich in song the valleys ring we deem we have but dreamt of war and we above the war-worn graves stand conscious of their homage due we wander where the cypress waves sad for the dead we never knew from whom we gathered in regret tribute of unregretful breath on whom the panoply we set that mould us on the road of death so now their time held consecrate we greet in hall and temple or where summer calling at the gate has thrown her blossoms in before and rose and marble clasp the dead and gleam about the ghostly cord to quieter camp the soldier led the seaman to a father poured how deep they lie from voice or tear with silence how supremely blessed so far in peace they cannot hear the grieving pines above their rest though strongly on their holy place the cumbrous nations prove their might unheard the battle thunders pace above the nations of the night a sense of this their dreamlessness arises to the mortal brow we feel their quietudes confess to war's futility that now above the dust so swift to slay alight the lily's tender snows and on the long forgiven clay its foeman's children lose the rose set to duration of the bronze the soldier stands all ages guest harness of high renown he dons but sweeter fame the flowers attest content as though for valour crowned austere untroubled rest the dead the citadel of silence found and all its armament of dread before whose imminence we pause and question far the nightward posts and seek with darkened eyes the cause of menace to the mortal hosts 
upon whose war our foe is sent what purpose his invasions prove or issues of the dim intent wherewith his ghostly legions move but never answer dayward ran nor message from the eternal scouts resolving to our anxious van the riddle of the dark redoubts perchance they know the secret sought tidings we reach from time to share that bought with life were cheaply bought but find the message dread to bear perchance to that imputed night the future lies too sadly clear perchance the soldier's better sight confirms the prophecy of fear revealing to the spirit's quest the mother in whose need the swords he faced with unregarded breast in vassalage to monstrous lords for in the prophet's light of dream she stands immanacled in gold disclosing as the sages deem decadence from the worth of old o vision of insurgent doom and thunders holden to that day portentous in that farther gloom the titans bend above their prey and all that sky is dark with wings that bear to feasts of infamy and shame of unconjectured things the vampire brood of luxury lo power with encrimsoned hands the blood draught of his shambles sips and justice at her altar stands and stammers with polluted lips lo man to man as alien seems nor seeks for serfdom to delight divergence of the chartered streams that sate the languid parasite but sits the throne of privilege and claims all lordship of the soil and wrings from penury the pledge of lifelong servitude to toil forgetting in the lust for power the peoples faithless to their trust who joined at time's avenging hour the nations touched by time to dust so dark the doom our sages feel impendent but the fates have stood unknown of man nor deign to seal the auguries of likelihood for peril that the seer foresees perils transcending intervene transition holds her mysteries accordant to the unforeseen and evil comes with good allied nor has supremacy of scope the builder and the plan abide we hope who are the sons of hope o timeless light beyond the years illume thy mysteries of fate absolve the future of its fears and loose us from the law of hate end of poem this recording is in the public domain posy by george sterling read for LibriVox.org by chris bars april eighteenth two thousand seventeen maiden to whom our fates assign the tale of mortal years what joyance on thy lips divine and at thy heart what tears musest thou girt with memories of ancient wars and woes the tale of quest on lonely seas for far romances rose are thine but joys untroubled hours days fashion gentlewise so soft the winds that stir thy flowers so blue thy distant skies for as the birds of tempe glad called by the dawn from sleep are thine exultant chords or sad as twilight on the deep thine is the dusk where love hath knelt to cry his holy pain the flower of all that grief hath felt hath found in thee its fane can light and hue imperfect limb can word of man confess the vision radiant or dim of thy dear loveliness i dream thy tresses float as gold spun to a mist of light i deem thy voice as sorrow told in music to the night softer than hebes to allure gleam thine immortal eyes great with fair memories and pure as dew in paradise 
thy lips seem harmonies unheard, portals to perfect sound, that shrine but render not that word the soul hath never found. Can art a fairer pathway trace than that thy chosen share, or we forget thy regnant face, who hold the gods less fair? So long as beauty's reign endure, art thou her voice to me, and all I note of high and pure seem shadows cast by thee. All marvels delicate or bright, to sense but scarce confessed, foam, fragrance, latencies of light that make a gem's unrest, mist and the tiny dawns that hide about the opal stone, or sunset Edens that abide, till day and dusk are flown. Thou gleamest an unrecorded star, happy their eyes that see, from domes of moonlight built afar, in fancy's empery. Thy flight is ever at the verge of art's horizon line, remote where dream and beauty merge, thy wings irradiant shine. I may not vaunt thy mystic grace, nor thy communion tell, unseen as sleep's approaching face, unheard as her farewell. Whom from the beauty hast wrought a vision on the mind, too fair for a hope to leave unsought, or human heart to find. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The City of Music by George Sterling, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. Where lonely now Scamander flows, and scattered lies the hero's pyre, the towers of Troy, saith song, arose, accordant to Apollo's lyre. When music, floating on the storm of chords that cried infinity, swept unto permanence of form the city of the Dardan Sea, and neath an arch that Iris drew from headlands of celestial gold, shone forth from heaven's pacific blue the faces of the gods of old. But when I list to music cry her ecstasies of grief and joy, Diviner visions throng my sky, and lordlier domes than those of Troy. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To One Loved by George Sterling, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. God, as he shaped thy beauty, took what element divine? For oh, I deem his angels look from heaven with eyes like thine. They are as gems by beauty wrought to blossoms pure and strange. Forgotten flowers the soul hath sought where things immortal range. I may not know the vision seen within their crystal scope, for oft they are as skies serene in all that love can hope. But when in those enchanted skies the shadows come and go, they seem as deeps whence music sighs, but cannot tell her woe. Such are God's jewels, though their light may grace but mortal years, divinely yet they star our night, more beautiful for tears. They are as voice to things that lie beyond the bourne of speech, too great for ecstasy to sigh, too fair for tongue to teach. They are as that intrinsic word that nature strives to say, by night an imminence unheard, a peacelessness by day. And thus their gentle glories are a mystery to me, so kindred to the evening star, the mountains and the sea that when we part my soul must yet regard in wanderings the beauty and the sadness met in far eternal things. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
The Summer of the Gods by George Sterling, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. Methought in dream I saw Ulysses bold, lured by strange music to the hidden west, pass onward in that memorable quest of islands where the demigods of old beyond the portals of Elysium hold the twilight and the threnodies of rest. Great gleamed the sunset upon ocean's breast, and all those urgent oars cast up its gold. Hushed are the voices of the mythic dales, and lost the days whose dawn and eve of yore, held yet a mystery whose kindly veils fell as a radiance on sea and shore, whose eastward moons and suns departing bore, a glory unto far intrepid sails. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Lords of Pain by George Sterling. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. The Lords of Pain are mightier by night. Swiftly, as darkness closed the dreary day. They marshalled whose inimical array I saw not, conscious only of their might, as through the hour's intolerable flight, in swoon recurrent of the spirit, they wrought grievously their will upon the clay, till respite of the dawn's delaying light. Not thus, O life, would I depart from thee, relinquishing at agony's command the lights and shadows of thine empery. But so put by the guerdon of the breath, as one grown weary in a twilight land, whom music leads to sleep, and sleep to death. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Fog Siren by George Sterling, recorded for LibriVox.org by Jude. The grey mist veils the deep, the seeming ghost, forlorn and olden of the world's lost seas, veering to fancies of the muffled breeze, their moans with ocean down the shrouded coast, ceaseless as from eternal pain and post, and born of woe, no mortal may appease the sirens grieving that as daylight flees summons the drowned a solemn shadow host then as the pallid spectres landward creep apocalyptic voices haunt the gloom we hear upon the troubling of the deep the bellow of the beast drawn down to doom and rending all death's empire in its sweep the trumpet's groaning rolls athwart the tomb. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Miss Constance Crawley in Everyman by George Sterling. Read for LibriVox.org by H. K. Virgil. Thine is the frailest of the arts, and like the flower must pass. Its empery in human hearts dies with the voice, alas. The poet tells to years unborn his dreams of joy or woe. His crown is of a farther morn from hands he shall not know. Though time, in tardy reckoning, placed laurels on my brow, sing as I might, I could not sing a fairer dream than thou, who by thine art and haunting face hast filled a thoughtful hour with somewhat of the passing grace of twilight and the flower. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Imagination by George Sterling Read for LibriVox.org by H.K. Virgil Thou needest not the guides of sense, O soul and inner light of song. Despotic wisdom works thee wrong, And frowning reason chides thee hence. Thy lands are hid from ordered sight, Thy word an alien realm hath made, Suffused as with the glory laid, On mountains domed by sunset light. In visioned memory supreme, Thy heart beholds forgotten things, 
Thy winds recall the fabled kings, and whisper time's remotest dream. Thy feet obtain the hidden ways, where steal the angels of the dawn, down ferny glooms that hide the fawn, or evening lulls the woodland maze. Thy wings at heavenly vigils rest, or lost in human zeniths roam, far down the billow slips to foam, the ships declare their ancient quest. Thine eyes forsake the sterile noon, till mottled flowers where Circe treads, like hooded serpents sway their heads, in gardens ghostly with moon. Who once hath known thy harp's appeal, shall hold its music past his lore, desirous of the crystalled shore and snows thy lancing stars reveal. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To a Lily by George Sterling Read for LibriVox.org by Caitlin Audra Thou livest yet, then few the days, although they seem not few, since here we watched, on garden ways, thy pure and moonlit dew. She bent thy pallor to caress, as snow that toucheth snow. Thou couldst not know her gentleness, though angels now may know. She spoke of all that love might dream, and dreaming no divine, till on her face I saw the gleam of holier dews than thine. She spoke of God, of change, of death. Blinded, I could not tell why grief so trembled on her breath. T'was thus she spoke farewell. Farewell, though yet her soul bereaved, in mercy unconfessed forbore to tell a heart ungrieved how soon her own would rest. Here in the silence I at last render, too late, unheard, mine own farewell, ah, deeply past all tale of tear or word. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. With the Strength of Dreams by George Sterling Read for LibriVox.org by H.K. Virgil I saw the lesbian Sappho bowed in light Before the hushed altar of the sea Song swept a lyre on which in threnody The ascendant tremors of her spirit's might Thrilled chord on chord to music In my flight from dream to dream I paused, I wept, while she Sang till I saw the western glory flee A molten pearl won with the wine of night I know not if the blossom of their day in paradise be blessed with fairer fruit, if deeper ecstasies of music may, dying or latent, fill their fancied lute, or happier teardrops find the olden way, ere yet the twilight seraphim be mute. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Testimony of the Sons by George Sterling Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Testimony of the Sons To whom the unceasing sons belong, And causes one with consequence, To whose divine inclusive sense The moan is blended with the song. Ambrose Beers 1. The winter sunset fronts the north, The light deserts the quiet sky, From their far gates how silently the stars of evening tremble forth. Time, to thy sight what peace they share on night's inviolable breast, remote in solitudes of rest, afar from human change or care. Eternity, unto thine eyes, in war's unrest their legions surge, foam of the cosmic tides that urge the battle of contending skies. The war, whose waves of onslaught met where night's abysses storm afar, break on the high tremendous bar athwart that central ocean set. From seas whose cyclic ebb and sweep unseen to life's oblivious hours are ostent of the changeless powers that hold dominion of the deep. O armies of eternal night, how flame your guidance on the dark! Silent we turn from time to hark, what final orders sway your might? Cold from colossal ramparts gleam At their insuperable post The seven princes of the hosts 
who guard the holy north supreme who watch the phalanxes remote that gathered in opposing skies far on the southern wastes arise marshalled by flaming fomalhaut altair what captains compass thee what foes aldebaran are thine red with what blood of wars divine glows that immortal panoply what music from capella runs how hold the pleiades their bond how storms the hidden war beyond orion's dreadful sword of suns when on what hostile firmament shall stars unnamed content our gyre mid councils of boethus fire or night of vega's fury spent what tidings of the heavenly fray these as our sages nightward turn to gaze within the gulfs where burn the helms of that sublime array splendors of elemental strife smit suns that startle back the gloom new light whose tale of stellar doom fares to uncomprehending life profounds of fire whose maelstroms froth to gathered armies of offence cohorts unweariable immense and bulks wherewith the dark is wroth reserves and urgencies of light that flame upon the battle's path and allied suns that brave the wrath of systems leagued athwart the night menace of silent ranks that sweep unto irrevocable wars and onset of titanic cars in armageddons of the deep deem we their enginery was not far in the dim eternal past deem we eternity at last will find their thunders unbegot how haste the unresisting feet of change on life's stupendous orbit set she walks away her blood hath wet yet deems her path untrodden strange by night's immeasurable dome she deems her hopes in surety held lo from insurgent deeps impelled the fleeting systems lapse like foam unshared she deems the kindred skies but runic gulf and star proclaim archival gloom prophetic flame the immutable infinities vague on the night the mist we mark that tells where met the random suns in changeless moulds of law it runs to orbs that roam anew the dark and unto which the worlds are born where life awakes to know again the light of stars caress of rain and winds of the forgotten morn lift up ye everlasting gates whence fare her feet to wars unknown to heights august of reason's throne and heritage of ampler fates when she the mindless clay no more in lusts or fierce potential hands shall range her uncontested lands or sister world's befriending shore till lapse her beatific years in emperies of art untold the music of her age of gold requiting for unnumbered tears till she behold the visual boon surviving elemental risk the nearing sun's enormous disc blood red at dusk of sullen noon till her appointed course be run till on the darkness faint her breath flown to the silent void and death sit crowned upon the ashen sun till sun and sun be met at last in warfare that annuls the night when sea and mountain start to light pyres of the sacrificial past dim veils of fire o world that were the stubborn bastions of thy frame and reaches of abysmal flame wherein thy spectral oceans stir a mist upon the vessel's skies gyrant to beetlejuice a flare upon the midnight's round altar a portent to barbaric eyes o dread and strong eternity pricked in an instant of thy clime the bubble of antares time is one with thine unchanging sea ever the star unstable frames her transitory throne of fire but in thy sight how soon expire how soon recur the inviolate flames throbs of the fitful sun that are unto thine amplitude of sight 
even as the quick unrest of light that stirs to mortal sense the star what silence rules the ghostly hours that guard the close of human sleep aldebaran crowns the western deep belted with suns orion towers and grieved with light of worlds destroyed and girt with firmamental gloom abides his far portended doom and menace of the warring void shall night allay his high unrest shall time his destinies aver or darkened vestitudes deter his feet from their immortal quest shall augury his goal impart or mind his hidden steps retrace to mausolean pits of space where throbs the hydra's crimson heart ephemeral may life declare what quarry from the lion runs and sway the inexorable suns where gape the abysses of his lair o night what legions serve thy wars lo thy terrific battle line the rayless bulk the blazing sign the leagued infinity of stars remote they burn whose dread array glows from the dark a dust of fire unheard the storm of rigel's ire a grain of light arcturus day unheard their antiphon of death who gleam capella's cosmic foes unseen the war whose causal throes perturb gigantic algol's breath who from afar we meet and name ere light and life their doom fulfil spawn of the power whose eons still the sons of taurus armed with flame what sound shall pass the gulfs where groan their sullen axles on the night what thunder from the strands of light whence vega glares on worlds unknown o deep whose very silence stuns where light is powerless to illume lost in immensities of gloom that dwarf to motes the flaring suns o night where time and sorrow cease eternal magnitude of dark wherein aldebaran drifts a spark and sirius is hushed to peace o tides that foam on strands untrod from seas in everlasting prime to light where life looks forth on time and pain unanswered questions god what power with inclusive sweep and rigour of compelling bars shall curb the furies of the stars and still the troubling of that deep what will shall calm that wrathful sky crave ye tranquillities of light who stand the sons of war and night behold the abyss hath given reply wards of whose realm shall ye avail to loose the tentacles of force that drag arcturus from his course and rend the weight of procyon's mail shall yet your feet essay unharmed the glare of cosmic leaguers met round stellar strongholds gulfward set with night and fire supremely armed shall sun or cycle yet confirm your lordship to the unseated vast or human period outlast the vigil of capella's term deem ye the eternal might will change the throned infinity of law that never e'en altered saw in all the past's eternal range child of unrest but fain for peace life dreams in her expectant dark of final things and waits to hark conclusive trumpets crying cease she lifts an alien voice to call to near the nebula o sun a little and thy day is done a little and the night is all a little and his rays far flown gleam in the dews upon her grave the storied pomps her epochs gave a dust within her deserts lone yea so shall life on worlds afar muse idly of a cosmic tomb where now past alioth the gloom stirs not with her awaited star her fate how stranger than we deem though faith behold with trusting eyes a vision of transmuted skies the splendours of the human dream to live though pain and sorrow cease to reach the high eternal heart to know infinity nor part to find the far ideal peace 
the life of each perfected world august archangels chanting praise deep ranked in everlasting ways with wings of grief and exile furled o oh, dream not all the worlds fulfil unblessed unbidden safe of hope not for finality the scope and strength of that unaltered will the eternal night hath writ in stars denial of the ends ye name ye stand rebuked by sons who claim the consummation of her wars constrained to what abysmal pole shall severed armies close their flanks to stand with deviated ranks subserving to a final goal shall godhead dream a transient thing strives he for that which now he lacks shall law's dominion melt as wax at touch of hope's irradiant wing are these the towers his hands have wrought dreams he the dream of end and plan dear to the finity of man and shall mutation rule his thought what powers throng the pregnant gloom unseen the ministers of law reach from eternity to draw the sons to predetermined doom on law ye serve with kindred might atom and world that hold her ways the firefly's mode the comet's blaze are equal in her perfect sight her bonds compel the vast where boils intensest speaker's sea of fire her lips decree the hidden gyre of bulks that strain in algol's toils subject to law's resistless word thy hands o force resolve the star and toil at alfred's battle car his flaming panoply to gird charged the immeasured gulfs transmit her mandate to the fonts of life inciting to the governed strife whereby the lethal voids are lit with augment of imperious tides on vague illimitable coasts and battle haze of merging hosts to which the flare of vega rides but nay ye cry we trust her hands induce an unconjectured morn to whose divine fulfilment born her strength irrevocable stands o lights by which far taught we trace the path of life from death to death o feints of her recurrent breath and strength of night's annulling mace profounds whose silences proclaim what realms of mystery and awe colossal wrath extolling law from unsubverted thrones of flame sons of the lyre whose thunders rise from courts the eternal hands have smit stars of the sword a moment lit ere life rename her altered skies without beginning aim or end supreme incessant unbegot the systems change but goal is not where the infinities attend deem ye their armaments confess a source of mutable desire think ye he mailed his thought in fire and called from night and nothingness and armed for time their high array dream ye infinity was bent upon a whim a drama spent within an instant of his day think ye he broke his dream indeed and rent his deep with fearful powers that man inherit fadeless bowers since he desires he knows a need nay stable his infinity beyond mutation or desire the visions pass the worlds expire unfathomed still their mystery so hath he dreamt so stands his night wherein the sun's abiding range dust of the dynasties of change and altars of eternal light december nineteen o one two my sleep was like a summer sky that held the music of a lark i wakened to the voiceless dark and life's more silent mystery night with her fleeting hours how brief to watch beyond her vault sublime the gyrant system meeting time that holds the timelessness of grief how pure the light their legions shed how calm above the crumbling tomb of race and epoch pass to gloom no ray can pierce nor mortal tread what gulfs define the cosmic storm the torrent of capella's light 
a needle on the nerves of sight till force annul the bonds of form till alcor vanish from the void wherein the dragon dares the waste wherein the spawn of alioth haste to ghostly bastions long destroyed o nearer dark whence man descries abyssal lamps that flare and sink profounds where stellar glories shrink or beetlejuice illumined flies in gloom as dense can speaker grope as this that bars the human will desires as vast her children fill or kindred mystery and hope lo peaceless ere the veiling day expand where now arcturus shines i cry to night's ascendant signs the timeless questions of the clay will life the born eternal crossed attain the secret of her hours will sorrow find atoning powers and love fair heavenward to her lost i lift entreating eyes to see gulf beyond gulf till sight relent sun beyond sun till time repent its question of infinity shall voice or vision cross the night from glooms where grope the hands of force on law's inexorable course to being's transitory light shall sirius resolve our fears shall vega's lord command the lyre to scatter from her courts of fire a music on the mortal years shall procyon with flaming tongue declare the doom his strength awaits or rigel's light reveal the fates whereto his shadowed worlds have sung o silence of the changeless dark whence hope uplifts unwearied eyes o patience of devouring skies that close on algol's dying spark enhooved with gloom the age stamps down the palace flare of babylon to night the lords of ur are gone the tires of time put by the crown to death the sons of life are thrust from night to night the nations pace empire by empire race by race the generations pass to dust enter o life their place of dread and seek their silence to attain shall mystery renounce her reign or darkness render thee thy dead where stirs the energy they knew joins it the forces undestroyed that urge the suns within the void and shake the star in evening's dew or sit they girt by laws unknown where to the senses serve as bars with fire of unrecorded stars that light a heaven not our own the night inevitable waits till fails the insufficient sun and darkness ends the toil begun by chaos and the morning fades and starward drifts the stricken world lone in unalterable gloom dead with a universe for tomb dark and to vaster darkness world how dread thy reign o silence there a little and the deeps are dumb lo thine eternal feet are come where trod the thunders of altair o ashen bulks that haunt the vast beyond the ministry of light o strong entrenchment of the night on chart and turris cold at last eternity thine awful hands shall blot the lion from our skies and build thy dark for future eyes where now illumed orion stands forever infinite of range unceasing whirls the cosmic storm in changeless gulfs where force and form renew the mystery of change a fleeting moment to thy sight lamp of thine altar alfred burns aldebaran to dusk returns and beetlejuice is stone and night what solitudes of gloom unknown abide o sun thy future ways ere light at last a sceptre raise resuming her forsaken throne when law's compulsive angels sweep the armored sun athwart thy path when hands resistless wake the wrath that smites to flame the boiling deep and sprung from what recurrent storm the youthful world exultant wheels where slow eternity anneals the manacles of time and form 
where dim alchemic powers rebuilt to laws immutable designs the primal unapparent shrines with beings basic mystery filled fanes of the slowly fostered spark whose fire shall light the groping clay to reason's sympathetic day and refuge from the bestial dark reborn to that selective strife and fury of ascendant wars what tidings of the immortal shores what covenant from death o life when in what maze of spatial bound or cryptic glooms that wall the grave hast heard the secret which we crave from that inscrutable profound what surety that thy sons attain the litten council of thy lords and thunder of seraphic chords to music not of time and pain what whisper from the world new-born recalled thy footsteps to essay the far inevitable way lit sunward from thy mists of morn nay were oblivion's nightward springs so fair to thine enchanted eyes that now forgot the message lies from mystery's reluctant kings nay are thy lips forever sealed o thou that stoodst aloof with death thou that with unrevealing breath hast passed the sword his angels wield she standeth mute she cannot say ah dumb to love's appealing deep if death be suzerain of sleep or lethe cross the road to-day she cannot say if she in sooth abide infinity's concern though time's unanswered altars burn in question to the final truth and yet from unaccording fates we crave the secret of our tears with trust in the betraying years and clamour at relentless gates and lost within the glooms that fill the night's primordial realm unknown see mystery on a vaster throne and truth far face receding still shall yet the fearful answer fare to ancient life supremely wise by seas that flash on alien eyes the riven sunlight of altair athwart the gulfs of moat and mind how vast to sense the shadow falls she gazes from her proven walls what deeps unfathomable to find lo wearied with the fruitless quest their shores invisible to mark we turn us to the outer dark and gleaming suns far manifest night of the dooms to which they sweep what rumour from the battle's verge where sun and sun their chariots urge to leaguers of the hostile deep o space and time and stars at strife how dreadful your infinity shrined by your termless trinity how strange how terrible is life how dark to beings baffled glance the pits of night and nothingness where manacled in lost duress the allegiant pleiads advance behold her little sight is drawn by hope's untold immortal ray debarred she seeks a toning day beyond her gloom she dreams a dawn thy secret o profound of stars we born of darkness dare to seek adjuring rigel that he speak his tidings of the eternal wars capella past thy lonely light what guardians rule the changeless void what final eden undestroyed will seethe the cauldrons of the night where on the path of suns far fled aldebaran goes forth to doom where unto night's tremendous tomb the worlds of procyon are led ere yet below our skyline dip thy sun-crowned spars to deeps unknown ere yet our pharos light be flown declare thy cosmic port o ship arcturus from the abysses vast that hush the voices of thy strife hast heard a whisper unto life assuring that she rest at last crave ye a truce o sun supreme what order shall ye deign to hark enormous shuttles of the dark that weave the everlasting dream shall sirius light the gulfs untrod that bar o life thy claimant gaze shall betelgeuse attend thy ways or alfred guide thy feet to god 
shall lone antares whisper thee his attestation to thy hope or alioth aid the souls that grope within the night's infinity dost dream to hold the ghostly heights that soar beyond mutation's reign or sway the tides of time and pain lord of the war arcturus lights wouldst see the crown upon thy brow wouldst still the scorpion's heart of fire wouldst tread the arc of rigel's gyre or greet the god his world's avow lo clasped to his atoning breast in whom our woe and wrong made just why this regression to the dust this loss of certitude and rest what farce were that in which the soul were summoned to celestial peace and ere her jubilation cease dismissed to her ancestral goal to what emergency concealed abides the realm we seek to share which to all antecedent prayer eternity hath not revealed hath vega's night diviner shores shall speaker with surpassing ray illume her worlds with vaster day than that the nebula outpours dim are the laws the sages give for science sees in all her lands elusive twilight in her hands the judgment of the relative obscure the glooms that harbour truth and mute the lips from which we crave the guarded secret of the grave so soon grown dumb to word and ruth but ye o sons concede the boon to those whose baffled eyes aspire to search your syllables of fire and read orion's telic rune the boon to know that life abides one with your immortality one with your changing mystery and foam of your eternal tides exalt infinity thy might nor deem their decrement to mark spread thou their ashes on the dark behold they leap again to light to light that summons life to wake and stirred from consummated sleep in matters unconjectured deep from mire to mind the pathway take the pathway traced with blood and tears and dust of all our fathers dead whose backward footsteps wandering red fade to the mist of nameless years how oft o oh, life on worlds forgot hast thou in thine unnumbered forms gone forth to time's transmuting storms and fought till storm and stress were not how oft hast striven hoped and died and dying fared to gracious rest the night's inevitable guest in alien realms unverified how oft to mystery and time returned their ancient ways to hold with lips that never yet have told the tidings of that distant clime with little hands that could not keep the mighty message of the night nor bear to day's appealing sight the hidden annals of thy sleep thus deem the eternity to come the secret will disclose at last whereunto an eternal past held lips to revelation dumb how vast the gulfs of man's desire children of change we dream to share the battle vigil of altair and watch great fomalhaut expire to live where darkened suns relume their kingdoms in the abysmal haze where nearing night attends the blaze of high antares red with doom to hear within the deep of law the word that moves her causal tides to know what permanence abides beyond the veil the senses draw and such the hope that fills thy heart o life on some allegiant world round procyon's throne of thunder world or poised in speaker's gulf apart so dreamt thy sons on worlds destroyed whose dust allures our careless eyes as lit at last on alien skies the meteor melts athwart the void so shall thy seed on worlds to be at altars built to suns afar crave from the silence of the star solution of thy mystery and crave unanswered till denied by cosmic gloom and stellar glare the brains are dust that bore the prayer and dust the yearning lips that cried february nineteen o two 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Music by George Sterling. Read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. Her face we have a little, but her voice is not of our imagining nor time, and her deep soul is one, perchance, with life, a mortal cosmic. Heritage of her is half the human birthright. She hath part with love and death in the one mystery of being, lifted on eternal wings from world to world. Her home is in our hearts. She is that moon for which the sea of tears is ever a tremble, and she seemeth ghost of all past beauty, haunting yet the dusk of unforgotten days, for of the lost, the changeless, irrecoverable years, regret will waken in her gladdest voice, and linger as the sorrow of a dream hath shadow for a little in the morn. In echo and forewhispering of her, nature hath many voices, gracious sounds, whereof she abideth spirit and unrest, being their mystery. Such is the voice of sea-torn headlands and the song of pines, when the world's harp is touched from out the north, all cadences and murmurs of the wind, cascades afar, vast whisperings of rain, nightward, aeolian fruitage of the lute, and gladness of the reawakened birds, heard in the morning twilight, like the drip of gems athwart a fallen lyre, the calls that herald in the wan blue arctic sky, the wreaths of wild cadmian waterfowl, tinkle of nightly filletings of ice touched by the dawn, and singing of all streams. She is that sorrow in the ocean's voice. In that undying garden of the years, sweet poesy, she liveth, and her breath, like winds a whisper with a league of rose, is fragrance of its flower, she lying pent within the web and mystery of words, those films of song that of man's victories longest endure, outliving tower or dome of clasped marble, not in vain her spell hath fallen upon the poets, Keats outsang his tender nightingale, and hearken Poe so sweeter than his bells. Great Milton made within that night, how clearer than our day, he shared with Homer, solemn harmonies from out the names of ancient powers and realms, caught up and rolled in thunder on his voice, and Shelley rained her tears from many a line. So filleth she the high immortal hearts, that sorrow unto song, so whispereth, haunting those deeper voices of the lyre that have the calling of life's tragedy. So calleth she, fast in whose golden toils, beauty, though captive, hath eternal reign. Many are we who listen, yet her voice first came not unto many, seeking first her chosen few, that heard her where she passed and saw through many veils her awful face, and clasped her raiment in their hands of flame. To these her voice was virginal, through these she poured, though as an echo far removed, the passion and the rapture and the storm of her great deep, full tided. These are kings having such queen as she. Silent we wait their telling of her glories, though their souls go mad with stress of the ineffable yearning for ever in their powerlessness to cry the wonder heard, the harmonies that surge upon them from her hidden deep. Ah, joy that leapeth in the living blood! She hath the star of loveliness and dower, and beauty's every vision. At her call the fawns have fled their slumbering, the nymphs gleam in their mazy covert of the years, deep Arcades, where all the woodland isles are tremulous of blossom. At her call we see again the living rose and pearl fabled of Paphos, and the hurrying doves. She with the wind awakened, we have heard, or seemed to hear, the chime of fairy feet, spurning the sea-strewn jewels of the moon. Or listening, have lingered with the time, wherein, to Aphrodite and the dusk, with travail of the supplicating lyre, low sorrow of the phantom throbbing chord, and fine insistencies of grieved strings, ineffably sang Sappho. Helen hath come, 
robed in time's purple and semiramis hath lit her deepening twilight as a star our fancy bolder for her voice hath turned our dreams to pleasant madness and we join careless the revels on a moonlit strand of dust of sapphire softer for the toil perennial of seas of ruddy wine whose purple foam the naiads wear as crown she hath a realm her own whose fragile isles the sudden edens of the sea of tone gather from shadow their elusive palms from mist their lilies drawn to fluctuant form by melody and here allegiant moons wane at her passing or in larger pearl restore her ghostly twilight here unseen the lutes of all elysiums of song awake in hidden hands orphean winds inducing her from quiet and remote from starry gateways to her glooms of rest cometh a murmuring and whispers vague of secret waters and of harmonies adrift upon such wings as seem to bear the weary into sleep for here abide the ghosts of all sweet strains that to the soul pass through sound's charmed portals and her winds are wafture of celestial wings that sweep her chords of shadowy gold to films of light ah sense of something beautiful forgot the bubble joy lifteth from but a tear she awakeneth who changeless in her might hath come immortal on her hidden ways from other worlds and sorrows at her voice imagination beareth its high vault as when in some great breathing of the night the clouds leave heaven lonely and reveal the deep of stars her beautiful unrest holdeth the soul awaking with her fire the hidden chords that of their trembling lift our ilions of vision she hath sought the garlands of aglaia and the dawns of elis and hath found a solitude a silence broodeth on the lonely vale that once was tempe vainly may we mourn their empire faded like the realm of rose of some forgotten sunset over soon the twilight of their temples met the day alas ere long the rippling harps are mute the dust in daphne wonderful and swift hath leapt from many ploughshares artemis hath still a secret place a holy dusk her moonlight haunteth yet the hidden dew she sleepeth with her nymphs alcyone hath told her sadness to the evening star it stirreth nightly in the vibrant deep she cometh nevermore the gods have passed they left us as the soul for sleep unheard with never a farewell and fled afar in the sweet morning of an afterworld to waken beautiful delight and dream have passed beyond recall and memory forever walketh with regret the years grow dark our musings deepen life a wraith hath taken in futility the ways that meet unending gloom heard from afar her voice but mourneth as the midnight seas born from the foam and snows of haunted coasts and home she hath not nay nor any rest waif of eternity her sightless eyes are dewed of the illimitable mists that clasp her and her night is very strange and where she goeth there is loneliness and where she loveth change and death shall meet music is the voice of the forgotten years the years that cry through her unchanging lips their loss and evanescence for her hands are those of memory and lead the soul to yesterday's regretful and the hush of holy lands beyond the winds of change in her the voices of our dead are met vanished lost light beyond the born of time an echo and the tears are at our hearts far wing the choric seraphim with her lo her ascensions and exalted thrones ah ringing of the swift celestial feet on unconjectured heights of harmony silence and she are sisters silence waiteth ever beyond her ultimates of flight with gentle arms and breast compassionate in welcome 
Music hath forever there a refuge tender when, upborne afar, beyond the stress of thought and reach of woe, and past all travailing of finite things, swooneth she faltereth of the infinite within the adumbration of whose light standeth the archangel pain, whose holy eyes hold buried nights and seas, for whom, with her, we take through storm and mystery the toils of life ascendant unto thrones afar, and for whose shadows come the eternal stars of sympathy and peace. The voice of love, to sorrow, still she crieth to the soul, its homelessness, and telleth of domains beyond the death horizon, and of rest beyond unrest, and of forgotten dreams that held the soul before this dream of life, in hush or troubling of the psychic deep, being the voice wherewith immortal things speak from their darkness. At her heart abide the unimagined harmonies that wait the archangel races of the farther years, who to their changed after skies shall lift the world's great evensong, till that far dusk she stirreth as a hunger at the heart, as grief and rapture of the human dream, and as a calling from eternal heights. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A White Rose by George Sterling Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo How pure the light thy petals hold In fragrance on the tideless air! How gently come the hands that mold, Nor break the sleep of color there! How mutely on the richer day Thy wafture floats of patient breath! We cannot hurry nor delay the feet of time and love and death. Ah, calm thy day, ere evening take her misty throne upbuild anew. Of starlit gloom till dawn awake, the topaz hidden in the dew. And sweet thy night ere uncontrolled, the restless winds of dawn depart, and cast from sudden heights of gold. The shadows tremble at thy heart. O oh, brother life, the silent power Constrains thy wings with other bars. Remote from human time, thine hour, Thine evening lit with other stars. Our senses light a little arc Beyond whose twilight vague untrod The reaches of denying dark Withhold the infinity of God, whose range of unrecorded night and distance of eternal plan, isle in equality of light, the stars of life in flower and man, and waken to recurrent morn of bee or blossom, bird or leaf, the life that in the days unborn shall sorrow in the halls of grief. When I Afar from human fears, elusive hope or joy intense, may yet beyond estranging years attain the blossom's innocence. End of poem. Of this recording is in the public domain. The Soul's Exile by George Sterling. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Slow to Hesperian gateways cold, The stricken daylight turns, And lone upon the sunset's gold The star of evening burns. With hush if shadow dimmer grown, With peace to weary things, Night from celestial glooms unknown Her holy silence brings. She stills the morning of the wind, How very deep the rest, her tranquil moonlight seems to find upon the lily's breast. Calm, beyond any dream of calm, her soul unfathomed lies. The little fringes of the palm are quiet on her skies. Untroubled sleeps the dreamless bird.
beside the sleeping rill the lucent stars alone are stirred for all on earth is still profound the sense at such an hour of some forgotten change in distant moon in nearest flower alike seem far and strange and a poem this recording is in the public domain in the beginning by george sterling read for LibriVox.org by nemo in panoply the nations wait colossal throned on many lands strong to fulfil with mailed hands the endless purposes of fate to thee america the word from deeps beyond the spirit's ken in accents all unknown to men who hearing know not they have heard but who in yearning nations deep strive vastly as a giant blind and docile to a hidden mind the way that it hath willed they keep for straightly in a crimson flood a light hath sought thee from afar effulgent of a spectral star the century sun that sets in blood it crowns thee where the shadows rift and laps the armies and the ships it glimmers where with patient lips awful and dumb the cannon lift and liberty hath touched to flame a star within the nation's skies a fire than beacons far nor dies or dying leaves our night of shame but brief for them the spaniards rod beyond our morning and our south they heard the message of her mouth who seldom speaking speaks as god the mother girds her glad to be where war's long surf of carnage breaks even now her mighty breath awakes the first low thunder of that sea may first eighteen ninety eight and a poem this recording is in the public domain memory of the dead by george sterling read for librivox dot org by caitlin audra o thou that walkest with the quiet dead and keepest vigil in the darkness cast around the portals of the ruined past what the strange glory set about thy head that we though other lands were surely fair should wander with thee in thy shadow lands and yearning grope for unresponsive hands and faces vaguer for the twilight there for thou art risen from the ghostly sea of tears of many sorrows ah but when we turn aside to rest with joy again we pause we sigh we wander yet with thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain To My Wife by George Sterling Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia To My Wife Not beauty of the marble set to art's intensest line, Nor depth of light and color met, though all indeed are thine. Not these thy loveliness impart, for, wrought by wiser hands, The charm that makes thee all thou art, beyond transition, stands and surer felt he to thee o fairest i confess for that beyond all fair i see the grace of tenderness past art's endeavour to portray or poet's word to reach for all that beauty seems to say is told in feebler speech end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Haunting by George Sterling Read for LibriVox.org by Ian King Dear, thou art ever with me, For it seems that, in all forms of beauty, I must trace thine utter loveliness, And find thy grace in gardens Where the drooping lily teems. Nor may the vision vanish, Still it gleams, In all of sweet and beautiful, Whose place is with the day, 
At nightfall, lo, thy face, A phantom pearl within the gulf of dreams. I would some hidden twilight held us twain, Wherein all rapture and nepenthe are, Where we might lose the memory of pain, And smiling gaze on sorrow from afar, As one long dead who sees sad earth again From paradise and deems her but a star. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. War by George Sterling. Read for LibriVox.org by Ian King. Ah, long ago, by that far hope beguiled, men said, Though now his hands are strong with steel, Yet shall war tremble, and the titan reel back into darkness, and his trumpets wild thrill with his death cry. Then shall man, grown mild, ere setting of the century sun, repeal war's rubrics, and at gentler altars kneel, and peace come to us as a little child. But with the falling of the last red sands, like to a blood drop gleamed the morning star, and all the dawn burned crimson from afar, and the new age upon the guarding lands came with a sword in his uplifted hands, crying the red evangel of old war. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Nightmare by George Sterling, read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Departing troubled to her tryst with sleep, the soul that night paused doubtful and afraid within the portals and eternal shade of his great temple. All the shapes that sweep athwart its twilight from the abysm they keep rose in tremendous menace. She dismayed, turned to her day in trembling, nor delayed, her breathless flight from that portentous deep. But thou, O death, shalt feign no dream nor dawn, though Ian sunder the hermetic tomb, and light annul the mausolean gloom. Nay, though contending sun to sun be drawn, and ruin that the world's diffused attest, to watchers round Arcturus I shall rest. And a poem in this recording is in the public domain. The Spirit of Beauty by George Sterling Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia The Spirit of Beauty In sleep I saw her, the immutable, who came in haunting on the farther dreams of all the poets, as a mist she fled, before mine eyes enchanted, and her face was like a lily hidden in holy dusks. Even such as gaze, in vision far from time, from out the skies of dreamland, being moons in slumber's realm of shadow, and her eyes were great with griefs unsearchable, and gleamed, sorrow beyond them, like the larger dew of Aden, having each love's perfect star mirrored therein. And with her came the hush that follows music dying, or is peace about all dead things beautiful. Low light, softer than shadow midmost of the rose, a raiment from the footfall to the brow, held her and clung about her trembling hair. And she spake words I knew not, but I knew that this was she whom every poet's soul had found for once in vision, and had felt thenceforth her presence alway, that, unseen, still broke upon his sleep, and was by day a hunger, and a haunting, and a grace, unutterable. For that chord the heart holds vibrant unto wonder at her words sang suddenly, and her untroubled voice, though glad, yet held an echoing of harps 
to which dead singers had saddened hearing there the sorrow in world voices and the tides of time in travail and the radiance that clasped her limbs was as the memory and afterglow of all transmuting light that from old moons of arcady fell wan through pearly blossom or about the isles of ocean long forsaken of their gods gleamed from the foam at twilight and the hush that drank her voice so like to falling rills lay sweeter than all harmony therein slept music and her dreams and there was set the silence that enfolds the ineffable and i had spoken but a wonder held my lips that i unworthy should behold what others had in guerdon for the pains of poesy though seen but once and seen but for a sorrow and in words half mad had striven to stay her flight but swift the mind turned with its dawn light on that veil of dream she smiled then passed forever to her day end of poem this recording is in the public domain to catherine by george sterling read for LibriVox.org by sonia to catherine discerning its abode so fair so delicate with all of grace i deem thine eyes in truth declare the inherent soul's abiding place but oh tis harder of belief to think illumined with thy smile that thou art made a child of grief a waif our careless hours exile yet such thou art thy spirit sighs for vanished heavens that could not last a watcher of unchanging skies in lands and seasons of the past where memory with tireless sight seeks upon unforgotten ways her visions holy with the light of irrecoverable days end of poem this recording is in the public domain mystery by george sterling read for LibriVox.org by nemo men say that sundered by enormous nights burnt star and near a star that where companions seem the sister lights the great abysses are so held by life's unsympathetic dark we press to hidden goals from gulfs unshared the friending fires we mark and we are lonely souls your hearts o oh friends beyond their veiling bars are hidden deep away your faces gleam familiar as the stars and as unknown as they and a poem this recording is in the public domain to my sister by george sterling read for librivox dot org by sonia to my sister o oh, face where light and roses stir as bloomed on younger skies the cloudland gardens faint that were the dawn in paradise what fanes of love ere life be done what hearts shall hold thee fair child of a lion whose setting sun is yellow on thy hair what love shall wake thy dreaming breast controlling thee in fears too young to know the heart's unrest too innocent for tears i fain in seasons yet untold would stand thy trust and guard as one that hopeless longs to hold thy virgin hopes unmarred joy is the pledge of grief to be a surety of the way that leads to loneliness for thee who art so glad to-day for beauty waits and helpless waits a heritage of woe she may not find pacific fates nor years untroubled know and certain as the fine and pure accord their gift of fair so sure must sorrow wake so sure must come the feet of care swift on the glory of the dream the barren dawn must spring not without shadow comes the gleam of any perfect thing 
not they that grant us beauty's light its deeper joy attain since only worlds in outer night the stars irradiance gain i deem it sad that time should mar a thing as fair as thou or dim with years the locks that are a light above thy brow but on the path that wait thy feet unfriendly powers conspire the days thy heart shall find so sweet are wonderful but dire the winds of eden stir the rose in gardens glad and strange lost isles where youth enchanted goes nor dreams of care and change life fashions and in mystery allure for love's young eyes fond love who changeless hopes to see that rainbow on the skies ah holiness of beauty lent to mortals undesert how far thy glories from content and with what peril gird end of poem this recording is in the public domain the poets by george sterling read for LibriVox.org by sonia the poets i saw from tamal pais the morning star herald the morning through her gates of gold though yet the night reigned absolute and old and day seemed past recall or most afar whereat the hosts of light that cinctured are in evanescent roses and that hold the vanguard of the dawn uprising roll to see the twilight's grey enormous bar sons of the dawn ye whose exalted light foreruns the day from an inviolate height your voices fall for said above your kind ye see the morrow when the world gropes blind in ancient darkness ere the east is white and the new mornings strike from mind to mind end of poem this recording is in the public domain reincarnation by george sterling read for LibriVox.org by ian king once by the sea her lips laid hushed on mine stirred faintly saying i love thee here how still nor in her eyes is that unchanging thrill as of the starlight solemn and divine death being possessed of them for if they shine tis by a sea that other shadows fill where foileth ever her pursuing will the unapproachable horizon line alas if irretrievably we part the spirit boweth with her weight of fears ah met again within the farther years shall i not know thee for the ghost thou art or will there be no wonder at the heart and sudden starlight in remembering tears end of poem this recording is in the public domain on reading the poems of father tab by george sterling read for librivox.org by sonia on reading the poems of father tab so airy sweet the fragile song i deemed his visions true and roamed edenic vales along lit by celestial dew elusive gleamed the timeless bowers the winds and streams were such as eve had mourned but ah the flowers too delicate for touch end of poem this recording is in the public domain the parting by george sterling read for LibriVox.org by sonia the parting gathered they sadly in that quieter day o soul thy sister spirits when that thou bent to thine ancient burden of the clay fell not some ghostly teardrop on thy brow surely they stood as mourners when the mesh of those recurrent ceremonies of the dust netted the spirit in her tomb of flesh they mourned as ever the abandoned must and memory 
with all her joys and tears departing cried farewell we meet again but sorrow said i for all worlds and years in awful constancy to life remain and love i share with her the mortal skies their voices are forgotten here yet when in some dear face awake love's changeless eyes we tremble almost we remember then end of poem this recording is in the public domain words for langes blumenlied by george sterling read for librivox dot org by sonia words for langes blumenlied how many flowers are gently met within my garden fair the daffodil the violet and lilies dear are there they fade and pass the fleeting flowers and brief their little light they hold not love's diviner hours nor sorrow's human night though one by one their blooms depart no change thy lover knows for mine the fragrance of thy heart o thou my perfect rose end of poem this recording is in the public domain the altar flame by george sterling read for librivox dot org by sonia the altar flame i saw a mountain at the close of day snow-crowned and lonely where the afterglow lingered the ghost of sunset fading slow i said this is god's altar and the way earthward of things eternal even all they that see his face and evening was and lo i was aware how that inviolate snow upheld a fire as one who in dismay views what he deems a mystery so i stood silent till an alien glory grown that light broke loose to a remoter sky and in its deeper heaven burned alone so had the star of evening fancied nigh sate for a little that stupendous throne end of poem this recording is in the public domain to one asking lighter songs by george sterling read for librivox dot org by sonia to one asking lighter songs a gentle sadness best becomes the features of the perfect muse the shock of laughter but benumbs the lips that crave immortal dews for she hath known diviner fears and she hath held her vigils far but never in untroubled years nor world that grief came not to mar for joy is as the wreaths that lie foam wrought along the sterile sands and sorrow as the voice whereby the ocean saddens all its lands that calls afar to pine or palm the changeless trouble of the deep that murmurs in the gentlest calm and haunts unknown the realm of sleep but pleasure's foam so fondly prized we strive to keep unduly dear its very touch scarce realized with hands unwarmed till lo a tear end of poem this recording is in the public domain the sea fog by george sterling read for librivox dot org by sonia the sea fog far from the marble reaches of the foam it wanders phantom of the grey old sea the night wherein it passes silently was once a deeper darkness even the home of the abyss so might man's spirit roam revisiting from realms unknown set free forsaken haunts of its mortality sad in the changeless starlight of their dome so she might come so from the eternal prime where night and sorrowing together cease pass earthward in that piteous release and shall i call her from the tearless clime from dream and light of her abode of peace nay lest my grieving reach her out of time end of poem this recording is in the public domain
The Nile by George Sterling. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Nile. Low moaning in the shadows of their might, I echo all the voices of my dead. I call until their memory be fled, Thoth and Osiris sepulchred in night, High Cheops and the Ramses. In my sight arise the ruins of their pomp, Stained red as by eternal sunset. I am led to where the seas are mystery and light. Thus ordered stand thy destinies, O soul. Thou callest, ere the lesser vision flee, Thy cherished fled before thee to the goal Far in the shadows of eternity. Thou art drawn down to where death's thunders roll, And lost at twilight in a stranger sea. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Darkness by George Sterling. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Darkness. The night sate weeping in a lonely land, or ever in the faithless truce of grief held dumb communion, ominous relief, with mystery and silence hard at hand. Then crept that vast conspiracy to west, and then came birdsong and the sunlight, born of that unnoted miracle of morn, and for my labour in the darkness, rest. My mind, grown weary with the day, it seemed, had lingered over the poet's lines too long, or snows of sorrow hid the flowers of song, for fire and beauty shunned his page, I deemed. Then music was, and lo, beneath the dome of song's high land I wandered, found at last were seas and cities of the fabled past, and fairy islands girt with golden foam. Will dawn at last, beyond the mortal years, reveal the land that now by faith we name, and music with celestial lips proclaim the mystery of unrequited tears? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Ideal by George Sterling. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Ideal. Read, in what maze of indecisive war sought I thy dooming beauty in the past? For as a light from firmaments overcast, or Pharos high on death's forgotten shore, thou flamest on my soul forevermore. Thy burning eyes unsearchable outlast all suns and furies of the cosmic vast, the star supreme that night to godhood bore. Thou art as morning in her house of gold, when mute dethroned unhappy night hath fled, to refuge with the ocean grey and old, companioned by the vessel stars in flight, and rout of armies panoplied in red. The rest are shadows, thou indeed art light. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Colonel John S. Engs by George Sterling. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. To Colonel John S. Engs Kindred to art's creative school, her sons discerning are. So gleams within the glassing pool the likeness of the star. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sad Sea Horizons by George Sterling. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Sad Sea Horizons. I yearn beside the solemn sea to pass its calm horizon line. In vain, O oh longing soul of mine, the star it hides is not for thee. How strong that hunger of the heart for marvels past the haunted bourne of unfamiliar seas that mourn the tale immortal to impart, of loves forlorn and wars unsung, forgotten tragedies that were of old upon the sea and stir no music on the poet's tongue. Ghostly, supreme, their voices lift beyond the purple of all seas, 
they lure afar the questing breeze and call us that we follow swift voices too sweet for mortal sense that waken where the billows surge a little past the lonely verge of seas unknown that call us thence o oh, beautiful and far away the lips of ocean seem to cry to youth divine that yearns to try the perils of a distant day star of romance how far thy goal remoter than the moons that gleam above the shadowlands of dream thy futile splendors stir the soul and we that seek thee shall not find nor linger where thy marvels are elusive as the sea line far and all the secret of the wind end of poem this recording is in the public domain evening by george sterling read for librivox .org by sonia evening slowly she wanders up the river sands faint on her brow the flush of lapsing day she comes with silence from the twilight lands and smiles to think the dawn so far away day's fragrance lingers round her in her hair are tiny lilies trembling lest they die and sleep her child is near who has in care the weariness of worlds the ceaseless cry of timid voices that the day had stilled comes to her wandering are those her eyes that greaten with the dew as if tear-filled or lowly stars awaking in the skies i shall not hear until mine evening come and flower shadows fall across my grave the gentler voices that the day made dumb nor hold the plenitude of peace i crave end of poem this recording is in the public domain Ultima Thule by George Sterling, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Ultima Thule. Alone I watched one twilight time a little cloud go by, remote within the fairer clime of sunset's gleaming sky. So far, so bright it drifted on over ocean's azure wall, I could but muse of glories gone in days beyond recall swift as to dim hesperides the wind fled on its way it whispered to the kindly trees and paused but could not stay the evening star at ocean spring passed seaward with the night how pure it burned i sighed to think what eyes would seek its light i fain with star and cloud and wind had held elysian quest and sought all secrets undivined beyond the mystic west but turned me to familiar things a lowlier way to go for who shall take their deathless wings or who their freedom know a sense of loss was at my heart of beauty far and strange of deeper joys in life's apart and over all what change end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Swoon by George Sterling, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Swoon Upon me, as on Sidim's lethal plain, and on the cities of a cursed desire, came in its panoply of clinging fire, from heaven's arsenal the mordant rain, fell anguish. From that ministry, in vain respite I sought, implacable that ire. The torment deepened, lingering and dire, till god had numbered all the nerves of pain the mercy of her unremembered face oblivion turned upon me at her sight down gulfs beyond imagining to trace the realm of self sank in portentous flight the spirit faltered in her secret place and lo pain's war rolled on another night end of poem this recording is in the public domain The City and the Silence by George Sterling Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Deeper than ocean's thunder, unsubdued, Titanic voices, 
of the warfare strong, Of man on fellow, man about me throng, In my captivity, yet how elude The tumult of the torrents that exclude The voices that to loneliness belong? How may I find thy silences, O song? Thine angels whisper, but in solitude. I am set far from that, fast as a flower, In some sad city garden for release. I search my grim horizon without cease, Craving, if only for a little hour, The stillness and the shadow of a bower, Where the blue mountains hold a realm of peace. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Directory by George Sterling, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Directory. Selective time, mid all the birth and dreams, toil graves no name thy fretting moth shall spare. Even though one say, Behold, my fame, a flare remote in alien dusks, forever gleams, lingering with the star. For glory seems, in sooth, a sunset drowned by glooming air nor empire may the stellar vigil share, gone like the music of forgotten dreams. Gone, till on worlds that serve a younger star, estranged by voids that blot Arcturus' light, or sunder Vega from the born of sight, remoter life shall scan in vain the deep, girt with the voiceless skies that hold afar eternal night, sealing the race's sleep. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. End of The Testimony of the Sons and Other Poems by George Sterling